Your Excellencies, distinguished delegates, colleagues, welcome to the session on financing for YPS agenda towards more equitable and sustainable peace as part of the high-level global conference on youth inclusive peace processes. My name is Anna Zariva Valente. I'm the global lead for conflict prevention, fragility, and peace building at UNICEF. I'm honored to moderate today's discussion and welcome you on behalf of co-organizers, the Global Partnership for the Prevention of Armed Conflict. Um, the Doug Hammarskjöld Foundation, UNICEF, and co-sponsors of this session, the permanent missions of Sweden and the Dominican Republic to the United Nations. We also sincerely thank Colombia, Finland, Qatar, and civil society and partners for organizing this conference. We know that within the discussion of financing for peace building and sustaining peace, relatively little attention has been paid to finding tangible and credible ways of financing youth peace and security agenda, young people and their organization movements and networks in peace building. Notably, also significant gaps remain in our collective knowledge and understanding of trends, practices and opportunities for enhancing um, effective financing for youth-led peace building. To address these knowledge gaps, partners within the Global Coalition of Youth Peace and Security have joined forces last year and produced a background paper on financing for young people in peace building as an input to the upcoming preparations for the UN General Assembly high-level meeting on financing for peace building. Today's session provides us with a multi-stakeholder platform and an opportunity to explore what are some of the major bottlenecks related to financing for young people in peace building and the YPS agenda more broadly, share from participants some actionable opportunities to improve both the level and the quality of this financing from the perspective of member states and young people, and also discuss some of the concrete next steps um, that collectively we can take to improve the level and quality of financing. So, um, to explain a little bit the flow of this session, um, we will start with the um, opening remarks by distinguished representatives from Sweden and the Dominican Republic, and then we will move into a facilitated dialogue segment. In parallel, um, we invite the participants to also join and contribute via idea boards link um, set up for this session. Please see the link in the chat um, with comments and priorities for action that you could contribute to. Your contributions will be monitored throughout the session um, and we'll refer to them in the conclusion remarks and also incorporate in the summary note that we will share after the session. Um, in the interest of hearing of all the contributors to the discussion, I kindly remind all the speakers and um, distinguished representative to be mindful of time for their intervention. So without further ado, um, I'm pleased to welcome you all and pass the floor to Her Excellency uh, Ms. Jenny Olsen, the Secretary, um, the State Secretary for International Development Corporation of Sweden for the opening remarks. Um, Your Excellency, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Excellencies, young peace builders and leaders, good morning or perhaps good evening. We have some decisive months ahead to secure bettering peace building financing. I won't dwell on the needs to make progress. They are well known, as is the timeline with our ANGA high level meeting in April. But I will make a case for us to approach the task in a smart way together across regions, organizations, and generations. This meeting and this panel is a well-placed contribution. I'm pleased to open it with Minister Feliz Garcia and to engage alongside key Swedish partners, UNICEF and the Dag Hammarskjöld Foundation. I'm even more thrilled to listen to the expert panelists to hear your voices and learn from your experience. We need all the good ideas there are. We are on solid ground. UNSG Guterres underlines in his uh, Our Common Agenda report that involving youth means thinking long-term and laying the ground for meeting future challenges. One could say that that is the only way to address climate change, including climate-related threats, secure global health, and build peace to involve youth. UNICEF's report on financing for young people in peace building provides some useful points on what this could mean. Let me pick up on some and share a few thoughts on how we have approached them. 
not because we, Sweden, always get it right. No, but because I believe collective learning is the way to go about here. The first one is the need for consistent leadership on YPS and peace building. Youth, peace and security is key for Sweden's effort to more inclusive and thereby more sustainable peace. We have been committed to the YPS implementation since the adoption of resolution 2250. And while we had a seat in the Security Council four years ago, another important resolution 2419 was adopted. Through our Good Peace Building Financing Initiative, we are working on more and better funding and strengthened partnerships. This includes funding to local peace building organizations led by youth to allow young people to shape the future. My second point on finances. Funding for locally led peace building initiative is challenging at large. Our applications and reporting structures are complicated and the small amounts of funding usually needed can be difficult to administer. This is a mismatch between financing criteria and how local organizations operate also applies to youth organizations. Donors simply have to do more to offer funding for meaningful participation. The Dog Hammarskjöld Foundation and GPPAC have made important contributions here. We are also exploring other ways. Through our development cooperation, Sweden supports young women and men's engagement in peace processes and provides core funding to United Network of Young Peace Builders. We'd like to be joined by more core support partners to the Peace Building Fund. My third point, we need to be practical in integrating a youth perspective and a youth participation in peace building. Sweden's Folke Bernadotte Academy, another YPS thought leader, has, with the UN, developed tools, guidelines and training opportunities. I invite you to look into this and to perhaps be inspired by the guidelines to member states introduced at this conference. With that, let me thank Qatar, Finland and Colombia for co-hosting this high-level meeting, which allows us to listen to your views on how we can get the right things done. Let me stop here. I look forward to listen to the rest. Thank you. Many thanks, Your Excellency, for your inspiring words and the leadership Sweden has provided to the youth peace and security agenda over the years, including on financing models that work for young peace builders. It is now my absolute pleasure to offer the floor to His Excellency Mr. Rafael Feliz Garcia, Minister of Youth of the Dominican Republic. Your Excellency, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Permítame darle la bienvenida a esta sesión titulada Financiando la Agenda de Juventud, Paz y Seguridad hacia una paz más equitativa y sostenible en esta conferencia global de alto nivel sobre procesos de paz inclusivos para la juventud. Las resoluciones del Consejo de Seguridad 2250, 2419, 2535, encabezadas por Francia y la República Dominicana, establecieron la importancia para la comunidad internacional so the resolutions 2050 and 2040 that were presented jointly with France and the Dominican Republic reminded us of the place, the role played by the young ones in terms of peace and security. We now need to put in place the agenda Young Peace and Security and address the challenges that come in our way, particularly the obstacles in terms of financing. This is one of the major problems that the youth are facing who want to build peace are facing. So it is a problem for many organizations, youth organizations, the United Nations, the member states and the donors must create systems. Unfortunately, uh, the connection uh, of uh, the uh, speaker is too bad uh, for the interpreters to be able to work. 
the financing must be more uh, flexible, more relevant, and uh, from the uh, youth-led organizations. Most of the resources used to uh, for keep peace building are not in the reach of youth-led organization. There are many uh, differences between the eligibility criteria and the uh, youth-led organizations are organized in such a way that they cannot have access to those traditional uh, sources of funding. So the donors must find solutions to bridge the gap between, that exists between their requirements and what the youth-led organization can provide. The traditional source of funding, uh, bilateral and multilateral uh, cooperation, represent the main source of uh, funding, but we should probably find, try to find uh, alternate source of financing. As a member of the United Nations, we know that it is our commitment to uh, work to reinforce the links between the financial institutions and the youth-led organizations if we want to advance the agenda young peace and security. We should, all member states, try to put in place spe specific programs that are well financed in close collaborations with the youth. I believe that there are huge opportunities thanks to the resolution 2535 that uh, encourages the member states to work in favor of the mobilization of international resources to advance the agenda. The dialogues that were held in the, during this conference will provide us with tools, ideas, examples to improve the financing of this agenda and mostly to uh, give us a better access to the financing for the youth-led organizations. We hope that this session will be fruitful in order to improve the quality of the financing in favor of the YPS agenda and for the peace builders on the basis of the resolution 2050-2535 voted by, by the Security Council. I would like to conclude my words by thanking the state of Qatar for the organization of this conference without forgetting the Republic, the Republic of Sweden and Colombia and the other co-organizers. -organizer, Thank you very much. Muchísimas gracias por su contribución. Thank you so much for this very inspiring words, Your Excellency, and also for the leadership the Dominican Republic um, has been taking in advancing the youth peace and security um, agenda. Um, we look forward to engaging in the follow-up discussion as, as a part of the moderated dialogue with a representative from both Dominican Republic and, and Sweden. Um, so um, with this, we will move um, into the next segment um, of our session, which is the facilitated dialogue. Um, taking note that some of the speakers in their introduction already mentioned um, that there are important gaps and, and challenges in accessing um, um, meaningful, adequate financing among the youth peace builders, we would now like to turn to um, a, a peace builder and hear from some of this experience directly. So I would like with that um, to invite to the floor um, Kessia Komosone from the Central African Republic. Um, Kessi, um, um, you are engaged uh, with URU, a youth-led organization in the Central African Republic. Could you tell us from your experience, what are some of those core challenges that young peace builders like you face when accessing funding? Um, and in your experience, did you perhaps encounter any good practices of making funding more available for youth peace builders for their work? Um, um, Kess, it's my pleasure to offer the floor to you right now. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, um, ladies and gentlemen. I think to begin my remarks by highlighting uh, the challenge of uh, seeking funding for youth organization around the world, I think it will be futile. Um, indeed, we are all aware of that. And I think that's why we are here together um, to have that discussion. And having that reflection shows a real evolution in the youth peace and security agenda, both at the level of state uh, and of youth itself. A moment that as young people, I can tell you that we just can't imagine, it was impossible for us to imagine that kind of, uh, of conversation like a few, few years ago. 
uh, funders consider young people as irresponsible or capacityless most of the time, and those stigma uh, make it harder for us to have access to funding by treating us just, you know, as beneficiaries. Um, but we know, and by uh, based on our experience on the field, we know and we can see that young people are engaged in this building anyways. And ladies and gentlemen, I think and I really believe that it, take, it, uh, it takes courage uh, to dare to believe and support the dynamic of youth in the context of building peace. I think that we must be the bearer of a vision of the world that goes beyond the cliché and framework imposed on us by existing and mechanism within our institutions. So you just can imagine our emotion when we learned that uh, the NGOP is direct with the funding from the Swedish government had managed to, to pass this, uh, this milestone to trust the youth and to have to finance youth actions in three countries in the African continent and not the simplest. Uh, we, we have Mali, DRC Congo, and of course, Central African Republic. Uh, this funding has had a positive impact, not only on our organization, but has allowed us to support community projects led by young people that attack at the base current or future signal of violence. Uh, this one has also allowed us to enter into prevention work. Um, and before that, we used just to work on like uh, reactive work. And so at that moment, sorry, and uh, the, the, the reactive work is to where you find most of the international NGOs present in our countries. You know, this is the way they work in that in, in that kind of dynamic that they work. And they, you know, they, they, they say that they are here to here to help the community, but we realize that they are not so flexible uh, as the main donors most of the time. And these two years, two, these two years of funding from the Swedish government and the trust of Peace Direct have allowed us to create a real change with our government, our local authorities, and above all, to arouse enthusiasm be, uh, among young people. You know, now we realize that we create a dynamic where they have the desire to be active with, within their communities, and especially to be at the decision-making table, because today we can no longer tell them that they are only passive actor of change. They are actor in their own right. And ladies and gentlemen, I firmly believe that this is how peace is built by giving a full place to young people, but above all, by giving them the chance and the opportunity to be responsible and at the expense of the change they will, and at the expense of the change they want. Sometimes and often, ladies and gentlemen, our decision makers do not know what to do to bring peace. Our experience shows that the gap between people and the decision maker is so huge that they no longer know what the dynamics are within communities and which one have a positive or negative impact. But the youth, being, the youth, it knows it. Finally, I would like to say that it is time to dare to trust the youth by doing beyond this beautiful conference in which we are participating. The action must result in the establishment of more joint financing. Is it to embrace a global and local dynamic that refuse to see the continuation of models that ultimately do not work? I think it is time to review our priorities and develop what I have called the youth figure, which is a mechanism of money for monitoring the fund allocated to peace building in countries such as Central African Republic, and which focus on the real percentage directly supporting young people. To conclude, I remain convinced, ladies and gentlemen, that this is all a matter of trust. Youth is waiting for you, and you know you need them. Thank you so much. Casey, thank you so much, first of all, for the inspiring work that you are doing, but also for sharing your experience and citing some of the concrete models um, of partnership between the bilateral partners, civil society organizations, and youth-led organizations that actually help in practical ways to overcome some of these very well-known barriers. I hope we will hear more examples um, of, of, of such experiences as a move forward in the session. So in response to these reflections and to hear a member state perspective, I would like um, to turn the floor now to Ms. Luz Andujar, Counselor and Permanent Mission of the Dominican Republic to the United Nations. 
um, Luz, from your experience, what are the policy commitments that are required to support more available funding for peace building? And what are the opportunities to scale up these commitments? Um, do you think the current policy commitments um, are enough? Luz, over to you. Thank you for joining us. Can you can you hear me properly? Can you can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay. Um, sorry, there has been. I don't know if you. Um, sorry, give me. Can you hear me? I'm sorry. I don't know if I'm having a sound issue. Yes, we can hear you very well. Okay, perfect. So, um, you know, I'd like to, um, um, me gustaría agradecer a los organizadores por reunirnos en esta conferencia. Uh, I would like to thank the organizers of this conference. Uh, proof seems to show that the priorities of the youth are uh, aligned with the different strategies, but we haven't found the necessary funding to put in place these strategies. The agenda, YPS, recognized the role played by the youth for the uh, peace building and give us a kind of a roadmap to help them, support them, and count on those youth-led organizations to go from words until to uh, implementation. We now need financing that allows the implementation. The resolution 2535 presented jointly by France and the Dominican Republic uh, highlights the implementation, the practical implementation of the commitments that were taken in terms of financing, uh, creation of resources that are accessible to the initiatives led by young people. This resolution asked for a stronger commitment to reinforce the capacities of the UN for in favor of youth. This work, uh, youth uh, peace and security, uh, have to become concrete for the United Nations. This Mr. Secretary General has decided to uh, reinforce the capacities uh, for, to advance the YPS agenda in all initiatives at different levels with the creation of focal points, uh, YPS focal points. So these are some of the concrete goals that will allow the implementation of the agenda. Of course, we had to be very creative, but that is not enough. We now need uh, financing. Uh, today, there are 119 focal points in the whole United Nations system, particularly on the ground, but uh, those are existing uh, human resources in the uh, framework of uh, peace building, uh, peacekeeping uh, missions. There should be some focal points working only with the use, for the use, and for that we need financing. We've asked the member states, the regional organizations and sub-regional organizations to create policies and special programs for use, for the use, and that allow them to fully participate in it with specific roadmaps. To do that, we need funding as well. So we need their commitments to take uh, commitments with numbers. So Finland and Nigeria were the first ones to put in place national plans, action plans, and thanks to those uh, experiences, we can see that putting together those plans and implementing them requires a funding that is uh, consistent with it. We must ensure that uh, the for the implementation of the YPS agenda goes along with an appropriate budget and that we can allow the different ministries to work. 
on the topic. All the young peace builders must be linked with governments. They need to be connected with the governments and they need a financial support if they want to uh, make their initiatives concrete. So maybe we need to have a specific connection between these peace builders and the local, the elected authorities so they have access to financing. So let's um, give access to the organizations, the main ones, but also to the grassroots ones on the ground. There are uh, gaps in our knowledge of the trends, the practices to improve uh, financing of the youth who wish to, wor the, to, uh, to work in peace building. So we need to uh, address that if we want to move forward. On peace building, there, we haven't paid enough attention to efficient ways to finance this, uh, to fund this agenda. This conference uh, should uh, help us for the next meeting in April, uh, this high-level meeting in April for the financing of the peace, and we hope that there will be a dedicated session on financing the YPS agenda and for the young peace builders. If the youth does not have access to uh, funding to create prosperous companies, then we will fail. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for really highlighting the importance of both international commitments, but also national actions plans and support for that, as well as dedicated investments and funds. And finally, leading to the very important point that brings us to the next segment around our discussion about some of the data gaps and some of the kind of gaps in our knowledge of how much resources are actually going um, into this important work. So with this, I would like to transition to the, our next um, set of speakers. Um, uh, to focus and unpack for us a little bit this data um, gap question. So in the next segment, I would like to call on Mr. Joao Felipe Scarpellini, Youth Peace and Security Focal Point in the Department of the Political and Peace Building Affairs, the Peace Building Support Office, as well as um, Shadi um, Rushabas, the founder of Peace Mentors in Iran, as well as the Regional Coordinator for UNYPI for the MENA region. So, Joao, you have been working on unpacking this question of, of financing for YPS for, uh, for, for quite a bit of time. How are the spending and initiative monitored by the donors um, and, the, and the global actors? Um, based on your experience in this analysis, to what extent do you think that they, the lack of this data might actually contribute to limited visibility um, of, the, of the work the young peace builders are doing? Over to you, Joao. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much, and thank you very much also, Your Excellencies, for hosting this conversation, UNICEF for convening all the partners. Um, it's a, indeed a very important discussion. The issue of adequate financing is really central to the YPS agenda and to ensuring the inclusion of young people in peace processes. But one of the major bottlenecks remain really the access to youth-sensitive data. Unfortunately, both inside and outside the UN, young people remain virtually invisible when it comes to data. There is very little collection, tracking, and analysis of funding, and, and so we have very limited understanding of how much of this funding is actually going to young people. And that is not only on peace building, but it's across the development, the humanitarian, and the peace building portfolios. Just to give an example, if we look at the, you know, the official development assistant, the ODA, we know that about 13% of the funding in conflict settings is currently dedicated to peace building. But the lack of systematic data doesn't allow us to really understand how much out of this $8 billion is actually supporting youth focus or youth-led peace building. And we have a very similar challenge when it comes to the, the Secretary General's Peace Building Fund that was mentioned by some of, of the previous speakers. Since the establishment of the Youth Promotion Initiative, uh, funding allocations to YPS have increased. Um, when it started in 2016, we had very little, under $3 million. Uh, last year, the YPI, uh, the YPI, the Youth Promotion Initiative, uh, contributed $26 million um, to youth projects. But those figures, unfortunately, still don't really paint an accurate picture. We don't have the full picture. We know that, for instance, quite a few of the other programs that are uh, supported by the Peace Building Fund outside the Youth Promotion Initiative, they might still have 
strong youth components, or they might even entirely focus on youth, for instance, as the case in, in the Sahel and in Central Asia. But we don't really have the systems in place to track how much of this overall peace, peace building fund contributions beyond the YPI is actually supporting youth led peace building. We don't really have a robust system similar to the systems we have in place, for instance, to track investments on the gender equality and women empowerment. Um, the challenge, unfortunately, is not only within the UN system. I think a very, very practical example, if you look at the OECD's Development Assistance Committee, they don't even have a code to track ODA financing that is targeting young people. And so we start with a problem right there. However, I want to also talk a little bit about the exciting efforts that we are trying to put in place to meet, you know, to tackle this data gap and help to improve a little bit about the visibility on youth. Currently, the UN has developed, have developed the Peace Building uh, Funding Dashboard, which will be launched now in the lead up to the high level meeting on financing for peace building that's happening later on this year. The dashboard tracks financial allocations on 40 different peace building priorities across a number of major pool funds. And those include the Peace Building Fund, the UN World Bank, uh, humanitarian Development Peace and Partnership Facility, also the Women's Peace and Humanitarian Fund, among others. Uh, youth empowerment and participation is one of those peace building priorities. So we're going to start tracking and understanding a little bit more how the overall funding to peace building is contributing to youth empowerment and participation. Just from the preliminary data we have on the dashboard, we can already identify that we're talking about less than 12% of those resources going to this particular priority on youth empowerment and participation. I also want to acknowledge that some other UN entities have been doing a lot to, uh, to tackle this issue of data. I want to mention UNDP that has included youth as one of the categories within the leaving no one behind marker that they use to track development projects that are focused on youth. I also want to acknowledge UNICEF that have recently adopted an adolescent tag, which is now enabling the organization to track and analyze yearly expenditures going to adolescents and young people. Um, so all those methodologies are great and very welcome. But I also want to conclude by raising a, an important point that those different tracking methodologies will create an issue around comparison and data aggregation. And so, for instance, we should really be discussing what are we tracking exactly? Should we be tracking funding streams and allocations or should we be tracking actual results? Also, given the lack of an agreed set of YPS indicators, what are the things we should be tracking beyond just the amount of money invested? Should we be developing a youth marker similar to the gender marker or should we create, a, can we create a, a standardized marker that can be used across all the different entities. We should, we still have many questions that I think it's important that we have in this kinds of conversation. I just want to conclude giving a, a little bit of a recommendation that I think in spaces like this, member states and multilateral actors should really start to consider ways we could really develop data systems that will help us to track investments on young people. And we have inspiration that we can draw from all the systems in place for gender equality and women's rights. Um, when we're talking specifically about YPS uh, funding, tracking, we should really think about a dual tracking system, looking both in terms of bilateral aid commitments that are targeting young people more generally, but also looking into aid that is going is specific to youth-led organizations, because that remains a big challenge. How do we make sure that financing allocated to YPS is reaching the right people in the ground? Thank you very much. Joao, thank you very much for bringing also a lot of uh, very good suggestions, practical suggestions, which I think we could all take um, on board as we prepare for the discussion in April and we, as we also work on kind of in tracking the better the financing for peace building more broadly. So thank you very much for that. But we also note again that there is um, a lot of interested actors working on this question of data. So with that, I wanted to uh, pass the word now, as I said, to Shadi. Shadi, you now serve as a coordinator of the YPS Research Network for the United Network of Young Peace Builders. And you also work on this question of, um, of uh, financing for YPS. So from your experience in the network, what are the key concerns, but also opportunities regarding addressing um, this data gap? Um, Shadi, over to you, please. 
Thank you so much, Anna. Um, and also, thank you, everyone, for organizing this conference. Um, different stakeholders, such a pleasure to be here today. So I'd like to start with saying that um, we have heard this morning from many different stakeholders that there is actually financing going towards um, youth-led initiatives and uh, to young people's work through different fin funding streams. Um, this financing comes also through member states um, who have internal reporting mechanisms for how they fund and what they fund when it comes to the YPS agenda. But I'd like to present data from a report that has been published um, by UNOI and Search for Common Ground called Mapping a Sector. This report um, consists data that says about 49% of the participants that are youth-led uh, civil society organizations have a budget of less than 5,000 US dollars a year to conduct their operations. And 97% of them work with volunteer staff only. That also includes my own organization, Peace Mentors in Iran. Now, um, this brings the question, uh, which i basically um, sort of touched upon, how do we measure the impact of all of this financing that comes through? We focus a lot on youth peace building and what young people are doing on the ground and the impact that they have within their communities and within areas that are accessible only to them and not to bigger institutions. Um, yet, we fail to understand really who is receiving this money, who is not, and what is the impact um, that basically carries out. Now, I'd like to go back to the question of data on a broader um, scale and add that there is a lot of financing and data and a lot of um, sources gone on to developing that when it comes to monitoring, financing, CT counterterrorism, PPE, and CVE countering and preventing violent extremism to the point that we know between 2002 and 2017, the US only has spent $2.8 trillion on their counterterrorism efforts. So a lot of other streams of resources could be better managed and not sort of, you know, sidetracked from what young people need to work on and to use for their um, community level or local level and even international level interventions. Now, having worked with the young people at the YPS Research Network and also many um, young colleagues from around the world that I have the pleasure of seeing in this conference, we all unanimously agree that there is greater need to collaborate with us. That all of these dashboards, all of these um, programs, indicators, funding mechanisms can be made in a world parallel to youth peace building and to the work that young people are doing. Cassie mentioned a lot of the gaps that exist um, already in her speech, and I would like to highlight them a little bit further. If we manage as young people to be allies in the development of the, uh, all of these mechanisms and all of these works, then we have succeeded in filling the gaps that exist because it's only through the lived experiences of young people that you can see the gaps. Never have I ever seen in any of these reports a mention of the country of Iran, which is under sanctions. Many other countries in the MENA region who are in conflict affected situations. How do young people receive money when it's physically and logistically a barrier? These only come through the lived experience experiences of young people who are collaborating together on the ground, tackling early warning issues and resolving conflict within their communities. Um, I'd like to conclude with saying that if we all turn to page 118 of the Missing Peace Progress Study, that is actually one of the best practices on how we can closely involve youth. Um, we can see there are many, many funding recommendations that are going on, including raising 1.8 billion US dollars. That is one US dollar per young person um, between now and the 10th anniversary. Well, by now I mean 2015 and the 10th anniversary of the YPS agenda, which may have been pushed a little bit because of COVID. So how do we raise that? I think the best way to raise this money is to ask what young people need and to allow young people to be um, the real actors who drive this need within their um, daily lives. And lastly, one final remark, the more mediators and levels that we have between young people and institutions, the more data gets lost and the more we risk censorship. So that would both apply to research that is done and also to funding uh, mediums and funding mechanisms. Thank you so much for having me, and I look forward to see what every single actor and stakeholder in this conference is going to do at the end of this conference to promote our YPS agenda. 
Um, thank you very much, um, Shadi. And what I'm hearing coming quite strongly from your contribution and also others is this dual kind of balance, right? That there is particularly important for us to both find innovative solutions and expand accessibility of funding for youth-led organizations and youth-led peace building on one hand, but also foster more principled and authentic partnerships in financing and partnering with young people more broadly, right? With that thought in mind, um, um, I would like to know that the Peace Building Commission has adopted a strategic plan on youth and peace building last year. And it is my pleasure um, to turn now the floor to His Excellency, Mr. Um, Osama Abdelhaleh, the chair of the Peace Building Commission and the permanent representative of Egypt to the United Nations. Um, Your Excellency, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, distinguished moderator. And I'm um, really, really very grateful for availing me that wonderful opportunity. Happy to have had the opportunity to join this lively uh, interactive uh, discussions. And, and I feel really energized to follow all the interventions. Greetings to all of you. Uh, at the outset, I wish to thank Colombia, Finland, and Qatar for organizing this timely uh, initiative. Grateful to to the Dominican Republic as well in, in that regard. This session on financing the uh, uh, YPS agenda is very relevant for the work of the Peace Building Commission, which following its adoption of, of a strategic action plan on youth and peace building last year, as, as Anna has just confirmed, is increasingly focusing on the critical role of youth in peace building in general and the necessity for better financing their peace-building activities in particular. But we need to do more to place young people who make up the majority of many conflict-affected countries at the center of strategies for financing peace-building and prevention. Through its convening role, the Commission, the PBC, has provided a platform for young people to make, to help making uh, their voices heard, and, and in so doing, has afforded them an opportunity to be part of the discussion, shaping funding priorities, and help them to build stronger partnership with their relevant peace building actors. In our meetings, many youth leaders have shared powerful testimonies on their essential and positive roles and contributions to building and sustaining peace, both locally and at the national uh, level. But not a few have, have also uh, 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 expressed frustration at the increasing, uh, at the inaccessibility of flexible and relevant financing for their work, in particular for youth-led organizations and for school organizations at the local and domestic level. The Peace Building Fund uh, is currently the largest dedicated funding measure in support of youth peace and security, and its work has helped to address the scarcity of funding in this key area. The fund supports young people's contributions to peace building at the local and national levels through the Gender and Youth Promotion Initiative. Since its establishment in 2016, it has invested a total of 79 million US dollars in 64 different projects with the focus on youth, peace, and security, spread across 18 countries. In addition to the fund's uh, essential work, however, we need to explore ways to complement catalytic PBF uh, project financing uh, with a diversity of long term fi financing uh, uh, mechanisms. Working towards strengthening system-wide coherence as well as complementarity and cooperation with IFIs, not the least, the World Bank will be the top priority. Throughout its country-specific regional and cross-cutting engagement, the PBC will continue to underscore the need for inclusive and varied modes of financing which meet the needs of young peace builders, as your good selves, and is uh, to make sure that the, the, it is diversified, flexible, and tailored to young people's priorities. Two months ago, we, we met at the, the Commission's annual session and held an interactive discussion on financing for peace building. The purpose of the meeting was to exchange views on peace building financing, which, which the Commission would transmit to the General Assembly high-level meeting next April. This will be an opportunity to suggest ways in which we can secure a more adequate, predictable, and sustained financing for peace building, including youth-focused 
and youth led peace building intervention effort. Today's session is very timely and provides important insights as to how we can build, contribute to young people's peace building and sustaining peace efforts and affirm the critical importance of placing young people at the core uh, of strategies for financing peace building and prevention. Uh, thank you very much for, for following that, that statement. I'm really very grateful, as I said earlier, for joining you and happy to see the, 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 the interpreter as well who's, who's hearing uh, 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 the, the movement interpreter who, who's healing the, um, uh, some uh, people with special needs to follow the discussion as well. I thank all of you and I continue following your, your very interesting uh, discussion. Thank you very much. And your Excellency, thank you very much for your remarks and for highlighting both the critical investments and the role of the Peace Building Fund, for example, in this work, which is which is noted, as well as commitment of the Peace Building Commission to further support inclusive peace building and prevention um, um, efforts. This is much appreciated. So with this, we are moving to the final segment of our discussion, where we really want to zoom uh, very specifically on some good practices and examples of improving accessibility for funding for youth-led organizations, right? We have touched base on this broader financing for the YPS agenda and investments, partnerships with the IFIs, tracking investments through the ODA. And here we really want to hone in on this critical aspect of um, resourcing for youth-led organizations. So with that, I'm in, I invite to the floor um, Stephanie Efetu, uh, Building Blocks for Peace in Nigeria, um, and also the Global Partnership for the Prevention of Armed Conflict, as well as um, uh, Ms. Christina Zetterlund, a counselor and civil advisor at the Swedish Ministry um, to the United, or Swedish Min Mission, my apologies, to the United Nations. So, Stephanie, um, from your experience, what are some of the examples um, of improving accessibility of funding for youth led organizations? Have you seen, um, or could you speak to how can the donors better reflect um, the experiences of young peace builders um, in financing um, the strategies, right, and opportunities? Thank you so much, Stephanie. The floor um, is yours. Okay, thank you very much for having me. Good evening, everybody. Okay, during their interventions, uh, Tadi and Joa spoke on the importance of data collection and youth ownership in order to make visible the experiences of young people. For us at the Building Blocks for Peace Foundation, the small grants we received from organizations like GPAC and UNOY Peace Builders have been very helpful in uh, building on the works that we do, despite the limited access to resources <laughs> that are available to youth CSOs <laughs> like us. So in 2019, the small grant we received from GPAC was used in the organization of a Youth for Peace Forum. The outcome of which was the launch of a coalition of uh, stakeholders working to advance the youth peace and security agenda in Nigeria. Uh, the following year, uh, Building Blocks for Peace Foundation received another grant from GPAC, which we use in the publication of an evidence-based knowledge production titled Connecting and Amplifying Voices of Youth Building Peace in Nigeria. This book has today become one of the major advocacy tools used by young people in Nigeria for pushing for the localization of the youth peace and security agenda in Nigeria. Just last year, through the micro grants we received from UNOY Peace Builders, we were able to carry out several activities, including uh, conducting a national youth forum, training youth leaders, uh, uh, conducting advocacy visits, and launching media campaigns, all of which we get towards strengthening capacities of Nigerian youth for peace through intercultural dialogue and advocacy for the YPS agenda. On our own part, the Building Blocks for Peace Foundation has also embraced the Youth for Youth uh, funding scheme, issuing small grants to youth-led NGOs in Nigeria for implementation of short-term projects. So in all of this, there are several lessons we've learned from this experience, which we can also term as, as 
as best practices, which we feel make this a small granting scheme and the Youth for Youth Funding approach very successful. The first of the fact that this small grants are very, very participatory and they lay emphasis on the youth ownership, uh, giving young people the power to decide how these funds are to be allocated and are to be used. Then secondly, unlike with the case of a uh, large grant from big donors, the eligibility criteria, the application procedures, and the financial reporting templates of these small grants, they are very flexible, uh, um, making it easily accessible for youth-led NGOs with little grant, uh, grant winning experience to, to try out uh, on these grants and to get these grants. Then, uh, Furthermore, beyond the financial support UCSOs receive, these grants often act as, act as a stepping stone in helping them to build their track record, to grow organization and financial capacity. For us at the Building Blocks for Peace Foundation, through the support and the advocacy opportunities we've received from these small grants, we have been able to bring together over 60 organizations and to mobilize both governmental and non-governmental organizations and uh, non-governmental and governmental actors also for the localization of the YPS agenda. Uh, today I can say with all confidence and with all, all sincerity and with pride in our hearts that after all our tireless efforts, Nigeria has become the first country in Africa and the second in the world after Finland. So, adopt a national action plan on youth peace and security so close i think it would be great for us to hear from member states in the room also how they envision to support such youth by youth initiative moving forward thank you very much for listening Thank you very much, Stephanie, to bring in some really concrete uh, ideas to the table. You have mentioned the intermediary models, the micro grants and the flexibility allowed for those, the youth for youth funding schemes, and really challenging the way the funding is thought about or distributed, right? So really transforming the systems of how the funding decisions are made. I can see a lot of useful inputs for us to dig further, right, in terms of the lessons learned. So, and you did ask for uh, perspectives from the members state so perhaps that's quite uh, quite good as a transition so i'm very pleased to to um pass the word now uh to christina zetteland uh from um the swedish mission to the united nations um um christina early in this discussion we have also heard um how youth organizations in the central african republic and the region are assessing accessing resources through the peace direct um how has sweden worked to improve the accessibility of its funding for youth-led organizations mm. Thank you for that question, Anna. Uh, well, at State Secretary also noted, Sweden does not always get things right, but today is an excellent opportunity to share experiences and lessons learned. Um, now, some of the good practices have already been presented by earlier panelists, for example, by representatives from, you know, Y and URU, which Sweden is proud to support through its development cooperation. I'm also pleased to note that GPAC received support from Sweden. Through its development cooperation, Sweden aims to provide long-term core organizational funding, as this is more sustainable and provides more flexibility for youth-led civil society organizations to determine their own priorities and establish local connections and mobilize youth. Um, through its support to the United Network of Young Peace Builders, for example, 128 youth-led organizations in 68 different countries are able to network, coordinate their activities and identify their priorities. And these range from building capacities to raising funds and promoting accountable implementation of the YPS agenda in the organization's respective regions. In addition, um, you know wise members have been able to share local experiences and feed those into global policy making at various global events. And by doing that, also increase the visibility of the work done by young peace builders. So this, this type of YPS coalitions can have collective impact at the local, national, regional and global level. 
Now, as, as donors have limited possibilities to directly fund initiatives that only require small amounts of funding, the intermediary model is also a way for donors to channel funds through already established civil society organizations. Those organizations can then, in turn, provide small grants to, to fund youth-led peace-building initiatives. It should be added, though, that this approach requires a thorough assessment to ensure that the setup is so that priorities and programming indeed are youth-led. Sweden supports organizations that increasingly open up such funding opportunities. Examples include, but are not limited to, You Know Why, Peace Direct, and GPAC. Now, another point that I would like to raise is the, uh, is the importance for ourselves to be coordinated. Also, Sweden must do its part to ensure that the funding has impact. I mentioned, for example, the, the importance of making sure that the funding actually reaches youth-led initiatives. Another aspect is that it's important that we donors coordinate our own efforts by our different agencies and, and organizations. In the case of Sweden, that includes, for example, CEDA and the FBA, um, to achieve synergies and to ensure as much of an impact as possible in strengthening the YPS agenda. One such example is a UNFPA, UNDP, Youth for Peace joint pilot program in Colombia, which is funded by CEDA and where the YPS programming handbook, which FBA has a supported in developing will be used. So um, those are some examples. Um, thank you. Um, Christina, thank you very much uh, for, for your contribution. This is very valuable and also echoes some of the comments and the suggestions that are actually quite actively coming on the idea board. So I also very much thank the participants who are contributing uh, through that forum. So just to complement perhaps and highlight some of the comments that did come through, we are getting quite a number of comments about funding participatory grant making to support youth-led peace building organizations, um, as well as providing long-term core support. Um, we hear some uh, valuable, important messages. I think you spoke to that um, around um, donors being able to amplify youth-led organization voices also around the impact of their work. And finally, there is also a comment on um, uh, that supporting financing uh, youth-led initiative and peace building requires also sharing decisions and power on where the resources are going and when. Um, under this umbrella of peace and security so young people can be informed and proactively take uh, part um, and influence those decision making. Um, so thank you very much. I think there is a lot of um, um, kind of echoing of the core messages between what the speakers are sharing and coming from the from the participants around um, the table today. So with that, um, I very much um, thank you for all the participants and all the speakers for um, sharing their valuable contributions so far and noting it's almost time uh, for the day to conclude I would like to pass the word uh, for the closing remarks for our session to draw out kind of the key observations um, and the messages and the wrap up um, for us um, to um, Sumaya Agrawal Youth and Peace uh, Youth for Peace International in India and GPAC um, Sumaya um, I'm very pleased the floor is yours welcome thank you so much it's nice to hear good practices from Sweden as they have been pioneers in advocating for the YPS agenda and funding innovative approaches for its implementation. As we all know, young people and youth-led organizations have strong connections within their communities, but their activities are often volunteer-based. Despite this, Youth organizations are often based on organic leadership structures and highly informal networks. This can be an asset for peace building efforts by facilitating wider community impact and reach. Despite this impactful work they do, youth led peace building organizations face enormous challenges while receiving funding due to strict mechanisms created by governments to receive and access funds. For instance, in India, organizations receive major national funding through corporate social responsibility. And in last three years, we have received like 
the amount that has been spent is $2 million. But peace building is not one of the focused areas. And to receive foreign funding for an organization, they need to sustain their work for at least three years with a budget of 13,500 USD. And then only they are eligible to receive funds from international donors and partners. Now, the question is, what can be done to advance the impactful work of young peace builders? We need to raise awareness about young people's positive and key role in the society, create spaces for inclusive decision making, accountability, transparency, and build sustainable support mechanisms. For doing this, we need youth-focused and youth-sensitive funding mechanisms to support these initiatives at regional, national, and local level. So I would like to share some of the concrete recommendations with you. Donors should increase the flexible, long-term, impact-oriented types of grants for youth-focused and youth-led peacebuilding organization. This will support them with more sustainable, systematic, and transformative youth peacebuilding work. Through the flexible funding support, YFPI has, uh, was able to establish a national coalition called Indian Coalition on Youth Peace and Security to create a stronger national youth peace building community with a clear vision of implementing the YPS agenda at national level. Participation of young people in setting priorities for peace building finances is still limited. Donors? should consider ways to increase consultation and involvement of young people when deliberating on their peace building priorities and ways to finance them. For instance, member states should prioritize incorporating greater civil society and youth organization inputs into the development and implementation of their funding plans and strategies. We know our challenges better so engage us in finding solutions for it, but not just in the implementation. For example, the Youth Peace and Security Fund is a decentralized funding mechanism which gives power to young people to decide and allocate resources. Member states should prioritize and ensure that not just the quantity, but the quality of financing can be tracked to see how programs are aligned with youth peace and security commitments. Last but not the least, donors should explore alternative, non-traditional, and innovative financing approaches. Some of the successful intermediary funding mechanisms that have been designed by civil society organizations are mini grant and small grant program by GPAC and Peace First, which provide flexible funding to youth-led organizations. The Youth360 approach for funding youth-led projects by UNOI and Search for Common Ground focuses on collaborative conflict analysis, project design, participatory grant making, and youth-led project implementation. People, it's been six years since we had this resolution, so it's time to localize it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sumaya, for your powerful message and the uh, amazing way to, to really bring us to the end, to close the session. I think that very much resonates with some of the comments, again, coming from the idea boards from the participants that I just want to summarize in, in, in one sentence to close our session. Uh, trust comes first. Trust between um, the different actors, both domestically and within the International Development Corporation. Um, and I think um, this um, conference, this session is one of those important trust building exercises where we can open and share and exchange. Um, so we very much thank the contributions of all the speakers um, um, to the session today. And we very much look forward on engaging uh, with you through the partnership, through the Youth Peace and Security Coalition on advancing this work further, in particular, and including not to looking far away um, in the run up towards April. Um, so uh, please stay tuned, please stay engaged. And um, thank you very much. Um, we will um, close for today and please enjoy your evening and the rest of the afternoon, depending on where you are. Thank you so much.